The Troll gas platform is the largest object ever moved by man across the surface of the Earth. But deep in its engineering DNA are connections to some surprising ancestors. You see, this immense structure just wouldn't be possible if it weren't for a highly unusual family tree that includes a grain elevator, an air pump, a racing car, a failed suspension bridge, and the nature of a single musical note. How do these connect with one of the tallest structures in the Seven Seas? I'm on a journey to reveal the engineering triumphs embedded in the tallest concrete structure in the Seven Seas, the Trolley gas platform. Located 43 miles off Norway in the stormy North Sea, it's not immediately apparent how big the Trolley is. This structure is so enormous, it's hard to get your head round. And most of it is underwater. Standing here is the equivalent of being on top of the Empire State Building, with the sea coming up to the 80th floor. Even on dry land, building the quarter-mile-high platform would have been daunting for any engineer. But Troll has to withstand one of the most hostile marine environments on the planet. Troll's legs will take a battering during their life. If you want to get up close and personal with them, there's only one way. Getting down to sea level 200 feet below. I've never flown on a boat before. Luckily, the weather today is kind. They can't even launch the boat if the waves are over 10 feet high. Troll can expect to be hit by waves 100 feet high. Right up to the base of the platform. These legs will have to keep trolls standing till 2066. They've got to be strong, but amazingly, they've also got to be flexible to bend to the force of the waves. Building them called for a special kind of concrete. The concrete used to build it has its roots in a garden with a man whose only desire was to find a decent plant pot. Today, concrete is the most widely used man-made material in the world, and it's been around for a long time. The Romans used it almost 2,000 years ago. But the Roman version would not have been good enough for the troll. It wouldn't bend. For the story of how flexible concrete was created, fast forward from ancient Rome to the Palace of Versailles in 19th century France. Gardener Joseph Monnier builds big, strong concrete pots to plant trees in. Only there's a hitch. Trees grow and expand, but concrete is rigid. Monnier needed to create concrete that could stand up to the power of plants. I've come to meet engineer Gareth Hughes to find out how he did it. Gareth. Probably the best way, then, to understand what concrete is, is to make some, so I brought a wheelbarrow and a shovel. So what's in it? The basic ratio would be three coarse aggregate, two sand, and one shovel of cement. That's what gives it its strength. Finally, you need water to bind it all together. That's basic concrete. So what's wrong with it? I mean, it is immensely strong, surely. It is strong. But only in certain applications. For example, if someone's to squash it or put it under compression, 
then it's very strong. It'll resist that force for quite a while. But if it was to have something that was going to be in the middle, say, a like heavy load in the centre of it, it could bend it, put it in tension. And it's not very strong under those circumstances. It's quite brittle and it probably snap. So, like any material, then, it can be very strong in one way. In this instance, you can't squash it. Yeah. But if you try and bend it, that's its weakness. And that's the problem with ordinary concrete. The concrete in the troll needs to be able to give to withstand the constant pounding from big waves. Gareth wants to show what would happen if it were built of ordinary concrete. First, we have to build our own concrete test lab. We know ordinary concrete is very strong if you try to compress or squeeze it. We're going to see whether it will bend. In other words, what tension does to it. Gareth has prepared a huge slab of concrete. Eight inches thick and weighing nearly five tons. You'd think this would be incredibly strong. Let's see. I'm going to drop a small 70 pound weight, just 10 feet. The equivalent of a 13 foot wave hitting the trolley platform. Surely, if the troll were made of something like this, it would stand secure. You would have thought concrete of that thickness would be pretty strong. I know I did. And it is. It's just that it's only strong in certain ways. It does have weaknesses. I can't believe that broke it. And this was Joseph Monnier's problem back in 19th century France. He found the pots cracked as the tree roots grew and expanded. Monnier's solution was to add a reinforcing material that could bend and stretch and make up for the shortcomings of concrete. In his day, he used iron. Today, we use steel. But it's exactly the same theory. And it's beautifully simple to make. Just pour concrete around a steel frame. Reinforcement lets the concrete bend, and concrete protects the steel from the elements. This slab is the exact same size as the one we just broke. It's still eight inches thick. The only difference is that it's been reinforced with 26 steel rods. To test it, we're not going to mess around with the kind of weight I can lift. That's the slab that broke. That should weigh a bit. Whilst we can't drop a five-ton skip, this will be 50 times the load of the earlier test. But will some thin rods of reinforcing steel really stop this slab from breaking? Technically, this should work. If it doesn't, could I? It's holding for now. The only difference between that slab and the one that broke are those few bits of reinforcing steel. This is the gauge of steel that they use to reinforce that slab. And this is the gauge of steel they use to reinforce the concrete on the trolley platform. That's got to be tough. As Monnier found, you don't need much steel to make it effective. But because troll is so huge, there's still enough steel for 15 Eiffel Towers. The rest of the structure consists of relatively cheap concrete, enough to build 19 New York Giants stadiums. Not even the biggest waves can threaten Troll now. But the rig also needs to be watertight. Again, it was the 19th century that provided the solution by way of American farming. 